Good evening, my evolutionary brothers and sisters. Surprise! You must be thinking, what has happened to this guy? He was supposed to be talking about some boring biological stuff. Why has he turned a politician? Let me assure you, friends, I won't disappoint you, but before we dig deep into the topic of my talk, we need to understand this, because I have called you my evolutionary brothers and sisters for a reason. We are brothers and sisters in evolution, and it means we are all are related. How? Let me try to explain. Assume this box is me and I have two parents and four grandparents and eight grand grandparents. And if we go 33 generations back, these, uh, I'll have around more than eight billion ancestors. And is it the case? We all know the answer is no. Reason? The total world population is 7.4 billion, and, uh, and that it has increased over time. So if so, what does it mean? It means we all share ancestors. Wow, isn't it interesting to meet your new relatives just sitting next to you? And believe me, it's not only based on a logic, we have scientific evidences for it. Let me exploit, okay. Let me exploit this moment and tell you that our story started here in Africa. Our ancestors originated some 200,000 years ago here. We may call them, if we go the, the religious way, Adam and Eve, Hava, Adam, Ya, or uh, uh, Manu and Shatrupa. But believe me, we have biological and scientific evidences to call them molecular or biological Adam and Eve. So they populated this region of the Africa, and around 100,000 years ago, uh, descendants of these ancestors migrated out of Africa to populate different regions of the world. We uh, presently, we all humans, are descendants of these ancestors. How and why these ancestors migrated out of Africa? This story in the journey of uh, man out of Africa is another interesting perspective, but some another time. We all humans are related to each other and we are bind by this string which makes us human called the human DNA. And the DNA is the blueprint of life. Whether it is uh, a single cell organism like bacteria or a multi cell organism like human. So DNA is uh, present in each organism and it carries information as instructions required for an organism to live and survive. How DNA works? DNA is a string of four letters, A, T, G, and C. And these letters, uh, when arranged in a specific pattern, make words. And these words, when arranged in a fashion, make sentences, and these sentences are genes. And these genes carry a meaning to code proteins, and which are the functional unit of life. Means different functions require different genes. We have around 25,000 genes, and each one of us, every gene has another copy. So that means two copies for each gene. So one gene is inherited from father and the another one from mother to child. So far, it's all good. 
However, during this inheritance, sometimes an error may occur. I have told you that uh, DNA is a sentence and it has a message. So let me try to explain it by means of this sentence. Say the sentence is, the car hit the dog. And this is message from our gene. And if there is a mutation, a change, the word, like here, dog is changed to fog, or the letters get rearranged. So the sentence is, uh, has lost its meaning. Or the word, the meaning is changed. So same thing may happen with the protein. So uh, because protein is the building block, so if there is a change, the protein gets altered. So it may result in a disease situation, or it may result in a change. These variations could be of different types. They may be neutral, they may be positive, or negative. For this talk today, we are more uh, concerned about the negative impact. And again, when both the copies of these genes are affected. Let me try to explain. Assume the mother has a mutation in one of the genes, so, and father has a normal. Father has inherited the normal copy, and mother has inherited the mutated copy. Uh, here. So, but father's normal copy is compensating for the mutated copy from the mother, so the disease may not appear. So, uh, in one situation, we have both individuals normal, and in another, we have one copy normal, so the individual is carrier. The same situation here, so father inherited one normal copy, mother inherited uh, um, normal copy, individual is normal. Father inherited normal copy and mother inherited the mutated copy, child is carrier. Let's expand the situation. Assume the mother has a cousin who is a carrier too and she has a daughter who is carrier female and this family uh, these families decide to marry the individuals. And when uh, the normal copy from this carrier male and the normal copy from no and the female is inherited, and the child is normal. However, when both the copies, uh, the affected copies are inherited, the situation may result in a diseased condition. And this type of diseases are recessive disorders. Recessive disorders are most of the times lethal, and many of the times they show severe impact. That means they, they show severe diseases. Uh, normally, like in normal situation, or rend uh, this transmission of copy is a random phenomena. That means an individual maybe will be normal, or carrier, or affected, it is random. But the probability of affected gene being transmitted increases in close uh, family group. Let's try to understand it with this example. So we go, say we go to market and we have to pick apples from a basket. And this basket contains both sweet and sour apples. So the probability of us picking the sour apples increases with the amount of sour apples in the basket. That means more the sour apples, more chances we are going to pick the sour apples. So this is the same uh, in, 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 in families where like individuals are closely related, so possibility of having disease gene is high. So now let's shift to the original topic of my talk. Are we at high risk of genetic diseases in Jammu and Kashmir? As you can see here, Jammu and Kashmir is a tough geographical terrain. So we have uh, the population in the region is located in pockets. The population in the region belongs to three major religious groups, which are further subdivided into uh, various caste groups. Population in the region prefer to marry within these small subgroups or caste, the endogamous groups, and then again prefer to restrict to the particular geographical location. And as I told you earlier, such scenario may result in high level of inbreeding. So in, that increases the chance of 
genetic disorders in the population. So with this background, since 2013, our research group started to explore whether we have uh, incidences of genetic disorders in the state. We explored local media, we contacted NGOs, we looked for newspapers, articles, all sort of means to see if there is reports of disorders which are not being characterized or which are unknown. And we started to find uh, reports of all such type of disorders, which range from neurodevelopmental disorders to severe skeletal impairment disorders. So here are a few of the examples. There were reports of syndromes in Kashmir Valley. There were reports of hemoglobinopathies like thalassemia. And these uh, hemoglobinopathies are quite common in Jammu and Kashmir. But most, for most of the cases, no genes or no mutations are reported. We also figured out a lot many families which didn't have any uh, known disorder. That means they have undiagnosed disorders. For example, in a nearby village, we found a family where the, uh, the, the family members, the children, they get impaired, physically impaired, by the age of 14 years. We uh, found a village in uh, Doda district where almost every family member has deaf or dumb in the family. And we suspect it's a genetic disorder. We have families with dumb children in, reported in Poonch district. We have a couple of more families where even the disease is not yet been characterized, but they have some impairments. And it is interesting and it is motivating and promising uh, because our research group was able to figure out uh, genetic cause of two disorders. So one such is a disorder from Arai village of Jammu and Kashmir that is pseudo, uh, progressive pseudorheumatoid dysplasia. Uh, I'll be talking more about it. And then another uh, is a disorder in a family from Doda district where which is heller warden spot syndrome. For both these disorders, we identified the gene, we identified the mutation causing the disease, and it has never been reported earlier. Now, how rare diseases are going to help mass population? How does it matter? Is it really important to emphasize on rare diseases when we have huge burden of common and communicable diseases? These are the common uh, uh, um, questions raised by policy uh, makers and healthcare professionals. I emphasize there are more than 7,000 rare disorders which affect more than 350 million people worldwide, and a lot more are yet to be diagnosed. And let me assure you, we have poor representation of India in this data set. And for sure, Jammu Kashmir is not represented in this data set. We can imagine the extent of uh, uh, and severity of these such disorders, the rare disorders, when we compare it with the common diseases like diabetes, which affects around 415 million people worldwide. And all cancers to together affect only 32.4 million uh, people worldwide. So, and I'll be presenting an example of the uh, example where a rare disorder has turned rampant in a village because of lack of clinical resources, uh, lack of diagnosis, and without any management. The mysterious crippling disorder of Arai village of Jammu and Kashmir. So it has been a decades old disorder. And in, I think, uh, data sets, official data sets, it has been reported as polio. About the village, until recently, the village uh, has no connectivity. Uh, so recently, we had a road to the, to the village. And here, if you see uh, this picture, you will uh, see that uh, host sphere could be the disease. The disease appears 
at the age of six to nine years with pain and swelling in the joints. And by the age of 20 years or so, all these individuals, they are unable to move their joints. So like, so they are unable to move their joints. So this is the crippled uh, feature, like crippled uh, stretcher they acquired by the age of 20 years. So you can see how severe the disease is. Okay, this is uh, one of the family. Uh, picture is not that clear though. So boxes here uh, represent males and circles females. And when a box, a circle is filled or uh, colored, it means the individual is affected. So, uh, and this is another family from the region. So you must have noted lot many boxes and circles color, filled with colors or darkened. This indicates huge number of individuals in these families or in this village are affected. Uh, I, may, I may add, like this disorder is reported with an incidence of one in million in UK. So one in million in UK and we have around, I think 70 individuals in a population of 5,000. So you can imagine. So I would like to emphasize, uh, and it is pertinent to uh, make this comment that rare disorders may turn epidemic if remain unattended. So what is the take home message here? Lot of research has been going on for common diseases. I'm sure it is not only uh, because of concern about the disease, but market is associated with it. And in this scenario, when research is driven by industry and uh, especially for these common diseases, it is government bodies, public funding, and philanthropic uh, agencies which should be taking care of these rare disorders which remain unattended and neglected. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.